uh, the same time as the blockchains program. So this is um, uh, online and matching based market design. Uh, it's a program that's going to involve theoretical computer scientists, uh, economists and operations research folks. Uh, and it's another experimental one in the sense that we're running a shorter format program. It's, it's running for only six weeks um, with the hope of uh, being able to involve in, in an intensive and, and ongoing way these, uh, particularly the economists. Um, so we're... Is it visible or no? Yes. It is? Okay. Oh, there we go. And do I get a clicker? No. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Okay, never mind. Sorry. okay I'll have to stick out here. Okay, so that's the program, online and matching-based market design. And there are five organizers. Uh, Itai is an operations research person. Federico is a fabulous economist. Nicole, actually there are six organizers, because Nicole is a computer science person, but she always amazes me with how much economics she knows, so I count her as both. Uh, honestly, she knows as much as Federico and, and uh, uh, Liat combined. Okay. <laughs> honestly. Uh, I know a thing or two about the uh, algorithmic part of e e economics, uh, but I'm mainly an algorithms person, and uh, Liat is a fabulous economist who just uh, left, defected from Caltech to Princeton with a fabulously big chair. Anyway. So that's the team. And, uh, and yeah, behind the scenes, uh, Al Roth will be a big supporter of this program. Uh, we'll talk about Al Roth in a minute. But these are the kinds of markets that came about uh, as our, all of our lives moved onto online platforms, you know, the, the internet and mobile computing based platforms. And uh, they, are, they are not just ordinary markets that just got ported to the internet. These are new markets with amazingly new ideas. And because they are new markets, there are new ways of running them, and there are new questions altogether of an economic and algorithmic type that arise. Uh, and uh, in fact, if you look at the sum total of all the, all the uh, I don't know, the revenue or whatever, the involvement of these markets in the, in the economy, it's a substantial fraction which keeps growing every year. And that's the amazing part. And, and there's no end to it, obviously. Uh, so uh, one thing I should note here is that many of these markets are matching based. Like here, you want to match queries to advertisers. Here, you want to match uh, customers to cars. Here, you want to match customers to rooms. Uh, these are where you want to match uh, workforce to people who are hiring. Uh, here you want to really match a man and a woman, <laughs> okay, and so on. So, so what has this to be, do with uh, online platforms? Matching, it should be ancient, right? It is. So the first uh, matching-based markets were uh, designed in the uh, 1920s, pre-internet and pre-computer, uh, allocating uh, hospital residents uh, in some hanky-panky way, which, which actually turned out to be some aspect of stable matching, and then in the 60s, uh, Gale and Shapley gave their fabulous algorithm, which became, made uh, you know, huge progress on this front. And uh, then there were many more matching based markets that came about, like kidney exchange, uh, school choice, which is being uh, run all over in, in big cities like New York and Boston. And eventually, uh, in 2012, Al Roth and uh, Lloyd Shapley got the Nobel in economics. Uh, uh, Gail was, had already passed away, um, and, and that was the topic of their, their I mean, that was the, the reason for their Nobel Prize. And as I said, Al Roth will be uh, playing a substantial role in uh, this program. He is, is at Stanford, and he'll come across often, he, he told me. Okay, so, so what this program is about is not only the online ones, but also the matching ones. You know, so I just combined the two lists. And... Uh, and uh, these markets use methodology from two disciplines. One, of course, is economics, uh, which has been studying markets for the last 250 odd years, ever since uh, Adam Smith, uh, 1976, uh, Wealth of Nations. And us, 
who developed uh, this very powerful algorithmic way of thinking, which we believe will uh, revolutionize, uh, will be sort of the, like the mathematics, the role that mathematics played as a key enabler of sciences in the last century. We believe algorithms will play in this century. And it, it, it's already becoming evident that this is a true statement. Uh, let's hope it becomes even more true. Um, and, uh, and of course, we have given very powerful algorithms like the stable matching algorithm, maximum matching algorithms that go to design uh, uh, kidney exchange markets, budgeted allocation uh, algorithms that go for to, to do uh, AdWords problems, and so on. So, so the amazing thing, the new thing about this program is that it's only six weeks long because, because economists uh, know the value of their time, okay? <laughs> and uh, they cannot just hang around. And, uh, and, uh, and, and so this is for the first time we're gonna bring together these two uh, peoples uh, under the same roof, namely this one, for an extended period of time, namely six weeks. Um, so far they only met over coffee at EC, if, if at all. OK, and then uh, one outcome of this is a book on market design uh, that's being put together by three people, three of the organizers of that uh, year or, or program. There will be 30 plus contributed chapters uh, with the foreword by Al Roth, and it's going to be in Cambridge University Space. OK, so the last two minutes, I want to give you a small case study Why do you to tell you about um, one market about which I know a few things just to tell you how influential these markets are, these online markets. And uh, I'll assume that this uh, company is common knowledge among uh, industry and, and university people. And uh, in fact, this, this company has uh, absolutely transformed our lives. Think about it. Half the people here are probably on Google right now. <laughs> OK. Um, and uh, it went public in 2004. Um, with a market valuation of uh, 32, 23 billion, which was considered too high. Um, at this point, Google brings us search for free. It's uh, happy to transform our lives for free. Okay, yeah, I, I see that. Yeah, we know it's not free now, but it's, <laughs> nobody charges us uh, 9.99 per month or so to use Google, right? Um, and uh, and uh, and uh, there is. What is, what is paying for this, mar this, this free, free service that they are bringing us? Well, it's Google's AdWords market, which uh, almost single-handedly supports the entire multi-billion dollar operation, as well as, for whoever has stock in Google today here, the $780 billion valuation that this market has. So you can imagine how big the AdWords market is. It is uh, gigantic, okay? It's a gigantic, huge market. And the amazing thing is that uh, our field has played a key role here. In particular, algorithms have key played a key role here. Algorithms, of course, have played a key role in uh, search. You know, think of PageRank. Uh, but here, there was a problem uh, with, uh, that came up in uh, 2004, uh, namely um, these, these uh, uh, keywords were just being auctioned off to the highest bidder, and that was not the correct way to do things because, because the bidders also uh, declare a daily budget. And if you don't take that into consideration, the whole thing is hanky-panky, uh, goes haywire. And you have to take it into consideration because, because the, there's a very heavy tail in the, in the way people part, participate. You know, the small, small budget people make up a huge fraction of the revenue of Google. And so we came across this problem in 2004 through Monica Henzinger, who was working in uh, Google, and Aranyak Mehta, who's here, the Google representative, and our representative here. Uh, we gave a very simple algorithm, online, optimal online algorithm for budgeted auctions. And it's wi widely used by just about every search engine company, including Google. The amazing thing, probably, the, I keep saying amazing because it gets more and more amazing. But this time, it's really amazing. <laughs> the solution has its roots in pure theory, in matching theory. Okay. Uh, in 1990, uh, uh, Dick Karp, who's here in the audience, and Omesh Mazarani, who came and left, probably he told me on the phone, uh, 
Um, anyway, we gave this uh, online bipartite matching algorithm also uh, uh, optimal, and the Google problem is a generalization of this in some ways and a restriction in some ways. And this was another very fine piece of work of which also the Google problem is a generalization. This is online B matching. Okay, I'm done with all my amazing things. <laughs> Any questions? Oh, so there'll be industry participation. Uh, Arinak will be there, Nikhil Devonur will be there, uh, many people from Uber will be there, and, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, I wanted to pitch to the industry people here if they want to come and attend it. Any? Yeah. So yes, sir. Uh, data marketplaces is something that is becoming a bit more common. Yeah. From concept to reality now. Yeah. And while they have been in use in, in some of the online world that we see, there, there seems to be a possibility of you know, this mushrooming all over the place. And is that has a, do you see that kind of uh, context coming into your scenario? I'm not sure. Uh, I, 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 have, I have floated that idea to people. Uh, because uh, everybody talks about data science, and if you don't link yourself to data science, uh, you're missing out, right? Uh, so I think we'll eventually put that angle in. So, yes? Uh, just to mention, I'm a philosopher by. Oh, great. Um, any kind of matching activity, I think, has an optimization. There's an optimization thing or efficiency. Oh, yeah behind it. Um, do people in this sphere think about what's being optimized? Of course, all the time. And why? Of you know, course, yeah. So, so in, uh, in uh, this, you're optimizing the number of people who got married. Um, this is uh, sort of more, uh, this is just, uh, uh, how should I say it? This is monogamous marriage, this is polygamous marriage. And here also you're <laughs> optimizing the number of marriages that happened. Uh, yeah. yeah. Try to rephrase Helen's question, which might have been a bit different. Yeah. For example, is there a lot of thought given to whether or not things like optimizing, you know, quote, social welfare, which is like the sum of utility. All the time. Is that actually like benefiting <laughs> society? All the, why do you think the economists will be here? <laughs> <laughs> That's not the question. Sorry, you took us. Yeah. So, so, um, so, uh, when we talk about maximum matching, when you when you are doing uh, 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 kidney exchange, and you are using uh, maximum matching, uh, oh, did, where did it go? Yeah. So, so, so here. So that's that's an optimization. You're finding the maximum matching. Um, in stable matching. Uh, you're finding a stable matching. There's no optimization, but uh, because uh, there's always a stable matching. Uh, in budgeted allocation, again, you're maximizing Google's revenue. So in all these matching problems, you are maximizing. It's an optimization issue. Yes. Yes, sir. I guess maybe the question was more about, uh, is the global maximization the best thing to do, or should we worry about oh. participants, so what's being fairness in matching? And so, so here, Google, Google's revenue is being optimized for his sake. <laughs> Uh, and uh, here, uh, for the sake of the, the, the sick people, the number of uh, kidneys that are exchanged is being maximized. Uh, and here, uh, sometimes there is an optimization. It's the number of people who get to their first uh, ranked schools when you're doing school choice, or, or the number of uh, people who get uh, uh, hospital interns who go to their first ranked hospitals. Uh, that's being maximized. So there are. You know, definitely that's a big part of the whole issue. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much.